You know, some of my fondest memories of growing up are the holidays we had and the pets as well. Yeah, and how good is it that we can combine the two now so that our non-human members of the family can come with us? I know, and often the pets are better company than the humans. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> well, in fact, so many people are wanting to travel with their pets. We've actually done a special segment all about that this week. We'll also have the usual health and training tips, plus plenty of my famous puns. Oh dear, sorry guys. I hope you enjoy the jokes just as much as Guyton does. Oh, I thought they were pretty good. You would. <laughs> Pet ownership is a huge part of Australian culture, but sadly, people are starting to be forced to make a choice between their pet or a roof over their own head. Annika, is this actually happening? Yes, Guyton. I mean, it's hard to believe because pets are so much a part of Australian life. I mean, even our recent survey showed that 91% of Australians think their pet is their best friend. Mm. Although that survey also showed that perhaps we're not as pet friendly as we think in terms of our housing. In fact, one in five people are having to surrender their animal either to a friend or a rescue shelter because they're prohibited from having their pet in tenanted or rented accommodation. Well, it just sounds like such a devastating choice to make. Yeah. So is that because the landlords are just simply not allowing people to have pets in their properties? Well, look, only 5% of properties are advertised as allowing to have pets. I mean, when you think that over 60% of households own a pet, it's disproportionate, right? Mm. And out of the 100,000 animals that go to, pet sh that go to rescue shelters every year, 20,000 um, actually go to shelters as a result of pets not being welcome. Right. Mm. So why are the landlords not allowing pets in their properties? I mean, it's often pets are better behaved than humans. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's just, uh, I think it's that they're following the advice of the property manager and probably haven't really thought through the impact of their decisions on the lives of animals. And um, I think the other thing is that the, the survey, this massive survey that was conducted in the States actually showed that pets do less damage to property than children. Um, so it, it's actually a fact, about a third of the cost than, than children do. So there's really no reason why the pets shouldn't be allowed? No, exactly. There's no reason. And the reality is, is that the landlord has to spend 50% of the marketing costs that they would normally have to spend to, to find someone for their property. Um, and that it's been shown that tenants actually stay longer. And look, people that own pets are responsible people, so they yeah. take good care of the property. So what can people do to convince their landlords that, that this is a good thing? Well, look, we've partnered with the Australian Pet Welfare Foundation and together we've put together some fact sheets um, that you can actually show your landlord, but also we've put together a, a how-to in terms of creating your pet's resume. And that's a really helpful thing because if you can actually show them that you have, you know, show them who your animal is, give a little bit of a bio on your pet, and perhaps give them some resume, uh, give them some references from neighbours, you know, these things might go to helping change their mind. So the Australian Pet Welfare Foundation has lobbied for zero euthanasia mm. in all um, pounds. Mm. Uh, what can pet owners do to help that cause? Well, yes, we're, their cause is about getting to 0% euthanasia. What we've done at Rufus & Coco is we've designed a range of fantastic pet toys. Here's oh, one wow. that Bo loves, which is the Rufus Junior, and um, here's our I Give, a, I Give a Wag range, which donates 5% back to the Australian Pet Welfare Foundation so they can continue their great work. And these are available in Woolworths and online at www.rufusandcoco.com.au. What a great initiative, really great toys. The dogs love them and it's helping a wonderful cause. Thanks very much, Annika. Thank you. With 30% of dog owners owning at least one cat and 45% of cat owners owning at least one dog, it's clear that dogs and cats can get along. The key is, however, is introductions must always be slow and we can never force the cat and dog to have to spend time together until they've had time to settle down. Now, when you first bring the cat home, it's a great idea to give them a room of their own. Let them get used to the sounds and the smells of the dog and the rest of the house for a couple of days first. Put their kitty litter, their food and water in the room with them and, of course, go in and spend a lot of time with them as well. You could also give them the dog's blanket so they can get the smells even more, or you could even give the cat's blanket to the dog too. 
Then after a couple of days when your cat has settled in a bit more, you can slowly start the introductions, very slowly. Now the best way to do this is ensure that your dog is on a lead. It's really important that you have obedience trained your dog so that you can put them into a sit or into a drop or that you can call them back if they are lunging on the lead. Now what we want to be able to do is we want to slowly let them interact with each other from a distance inside the room. So they can check out each other, doesn't matter if your cat wants to sit under the bed and hide but just still stare at the dog. As long as your dog is calmly in there with it, what we want to do as well is we want to make sure that we've got plenty of treats in our pocket so that we can praise the dog for great behaviour. Like here now, these two, how good are they being? This is the kind of interactions that we want in the early days, just spending some time in the room together so they can get used to each other and rewarding that desired behaviour that we want. Now after we've done this a few times and they're really calm around each other like these two, this is the first time they've met, <laughs> what we can do is we can then slowly start to take off the lead, again important that we have that obedience, so they can be used to being together and your dog gets used to having the freedom but still doing the right behaviour then the key is probably I would say not to leave them alone for at least a month. You want to make sure that you're around all the time to monitor the interactions. So if you do go out, a baby door is a great way to keep them separated or of course keep your cat in the other room as well like they were first introduced to. Remember some dogs are never going to be able to be left alone with cats. It could be due to their size, they might want to play with the cat, their new best buddy and it could pose a danger to the cat. Or they also might have a really high prey drive and in those instances it could just just be that the cat takes off and the dog can't help itself. Its instinct kicks in and it gives chase. So it's up to you as the owner to really understand your dog's behaviour and know if there could be any danger to your cat if it is left alone. If you feel like you need a bit of help, the NDTF website has some trainers listed on there, so why not give them a call and then that way you can make sure the interactions are a happy one. No vet likes to tell an owner that their beloved fur kit is carrying too much weight. But when you consider that over 30% of Australian pets are either overweight or obese, awkward conversations about the subject are becoming commonplace. Overweight pets are unhealthy pets. They're at increased risk of joint disease, heart disease, pancreatitis, diabetes, just to name a few. Now these things not only reduce the quality of a pet's life, but they're also very costly for the owner to treat and maintain. Obesity affects just about every health problem in pets, and a lot of owners don't realise this. Just like us, pets gain weight when there's an imbalance between calorie input and calorie output. But why does the imbalance exist? Well, for one, we're a lot busier these days. We've got a lot of responsibilities, a lot of things to do, and taking the dog for a walk becomes a lower priority. Also, we're keeping our dogs and cats indoors a lot more these days. Now, that's a good thing for cats, but it can lead to a decrease in incidental exercise. And when it comes to dogs and children, we all know where they tend to sit. Underneath the high chair or under the table, waiting for that morsel of food from a tiny hand. I know that's really hard to avoid, as is pleading eyes. But what you need to remember is that what might seem like a treat for us could be the calorie equivalent of an entire meal for them. For example, this cookie here, which Hudson is focused on, is the equivalent of an entire hamburger for me. And for a cat, this piece of cheddar cheese is the equivalent of two hamburgers. This full cream milk here, the equivalent of three hamburgers. So you can see why obesity is just so common. Your vet is the best person to assess your pet's weight. The reason being that there's so much variability among breeds and what's acceptable in terms of weight ranges. So what we do is we use a body condition score as well as their actual weight to assess them. And let's have a look at you, Hudson, if you'll stay still. Well, his ribs are quite palpable and he has got a nice little waist and his abdominal fat is, well, pretty much non-existent. It's still a little bit there, but compared to last season, he's looking pretty trim. So Hudson, I reckon I'd be happy to say that you're a five out of nine, where five is actually ideal. Nine is obese and one is severely underweight. So you're doing well, yes. 
If your pet is diagnosed as being overweight, your vet will put together a detailed weight loss plan to ensure that they can reach their ideal weight in the appropriate time. You need to make sure that weight loss is controlled and slow. And most clinics are very happy to support you through this process with weekly weigh-ins and nurse follow-ups. As always, prevention is far better than the cure. So to keep your pet happy and healthy, speak to your vet. And to find out more about how HIF's pet insurance can help cover your pet for any unexpected illnesses, check out their website. Did you know that by shopping at Pet Stock, you can help pets and families in need through their charity foundation, Pet Stock Assist? Simply by buying a $2 bottle of water, an annual calendar, rounding up your purchase, or simply making a small donation, every little bit helps. And Dion's here to tell me all about how it works. G'day, Dion. Hi, Gotten. So, what are some of the initiatives that Pet Stock Assist supports? Pet Stock Assist supports adoption uh, in our stores through our partnership with Pet Rescue. So we actually offer free space within our stores to local rescue shelters and they can come and house the pets until they find their forever homes, which is fantastic. We also run a national pet adoption day every year, which is a huge event where we look to find forever homes for as many pets as we possibly can. And we run adoption days throughout the year also outside of that. So it's a, you know, it's a consistent thing through the year, not just a one-off event. As a charity, we've donated one and a half million dollars plus to Amazing. really worthwhile charities. Yep. Uh, and also over four million dollars worth of Mars Pet Care food to charities and shelters that need, uh, need the food and also foster carers who are desperate for it, so. It's a wide network. It's a really wide network. I was actually at one of the pet adoption days last year and one of the things that amazed me was how passionate the staff are about this. How do they get involved with Pet Stock Assist? Yeah, our staff are amazing. We've got over 60% of the network who actually salary sacrifice into Pet Stock Assist, so they're giving up their hard earned dollars every week wow. to help our charity. And that goes towards supporting organisations like uh, Assistance Dogs Australia, Guide Dogs Australia, Young Diggers, Starlight Foundation and Pet Rescue. So it, it's great that they do that and we, we thank them all for it. Um, our staff also give up their time outside of business hours. So they will go and support things like our microchip blitz where we offer low price microchipping for pets um, and that really promotes responsible pet ownership. And they donate their time on our major food donation days. So it's nothing for them to go and spend half a day uh, handing out bags of yeah. dog and cat food to really worthwhile shelters and foster carers who really need it. Yeah, you really get the sense that Pet Stock Assist is creating this great family and community spirit. What are some of the things the public can do to get involved? Yeah, sure. Um, the public can round up their purchases. So if they buy an item for $3.50, they can round up to $4 and donate the extra 50 cents. They can donate directly online through petstock.com.au. They can buy a bottle of Pet Stock Assist water or our annual calendar, which promotes pet adoption. Mm -hmm. Our tote bags, which are a great item, and we're doing our bit for the environment there. We have Santa photos that happen at Christmas Santa photos time. with the pets. Yep, it's a fantastic uh, initiative. The does he know if they've been good or bad? Oh, he has or a nice? Sometimes he has a little trouble interpreting that, but he does his best, and we, we get there in the end. <laughs> our wishing trees, so customers can put gifts under the wishing tree which will go to local shelters in the area and we have supplier campaigns where sometimes if you buy particular products some of the proceeds will go back to Petstock Assist so we encourage people to obviously support those when they come and shop at Petstock. That's great Dion, just a wonderful incentive for me to maybe drink some more water today. <laughs> this week's Smart Pet is certainly no bird brain. Well Sue, done. the Rosella, is more than happy to step up to any challenge, especially when her bestie Belinda is there. She can not only shake a tail feather, but will shake your hand too. Soup also likes to show a little affection, giving you a peck on the lips to say thanks for the treats. She's quite the feathered friend and always happy to play up for the camera. Think your pet has the smarts to win our Smart Pets competition? Then make sure you get your entry in. One lucky viewer will receive a Pawson prize pack valued at over two and a half grand, including a $500 pet stock gift voucher, a year's supply of pet food, a $500 HIF wellbeing and massage voucher for you, and $500 worth of Family Parks gift vouchers. There's also three $100 pet stock vouchers for runner-ups. To enter, just send us a video of your pet doing their amazing trick. The more unique and talented, the better. So be as smart as your pet and enter to win. Visit poochesatplay.com for more details. It can be hard.
hard feeding our dog a raw food diet when you're on holidays because you don't have the freezer space, I guess. So Chris, you've got these little bites which solve that problem, don't they? We do, just recently released. So these are a freeze dried product. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we're doing, we're taking all the moisture okay. out of the product. Yep. It's still 100% big dog goodness. All of our, our formulation hasn't changed from them. We've just removed the moisture to be to make them shelf stable. Okay. Uh, so excellent for traveling. Yes. But not just for that, also as uh, toppers for um, kibble diet. Yep. So if there's people out there still haven't, aren't convinced on the raw food, mm -hmm. still feeding a kibble, they can put these on top of them okay. and still getting the benefits of a raw food diet as yes. well. You can also use them in toys like con toys and that sort of uh, stuff as well to keep the stimulation. Toys, stick them in there. Absolutely. Yeah, nice one. And also Darcy, I think, going to really like these. What I think is awesome about this is this Tazzy salmon one, they came from right there. Right there, over there. Right that over way. there. Yeah, cool. So literally we put water on them and then it's exactly the same. Exactly the same, full of uh, big dog goodness. Okay. Uh, the same proteins, yep. uh, nutrition, vitamins, minerals. We just don't need a freezer, so that's great for travelling. If you'd like to find out more about the big dog little bites, <laughs> visit their website. Darcy's going to love these. Looking for somewhere to escape with your pooch? Then take a look at this week's Take Your Pet Feature Properties. Queensland holidays in the beautiful Noosa hinterland are made all the more enjoyable at Noosa Ravalon Farm Cottages Retreat and Sanctuary. The fully self-contained holiday accommodation is set on 30 private acres and is great for families, honeymooners, small groups or couples. What's more, it's pet friendly. Close to Lake Kutharaba, Pomona, Umundi, Fraser Island and Kalula, it's the perfect place to base yourself to explore the many attractions in the region. From bushwalking, horse riding trails, markets and galleries, to museums, restaurants, fishing and swimming, you're spoilt for choice at eco-friendly Avalon. <coughs> Families return year after year to the magnificent river and facilities of Discovery Park's Foster, a hidden treasure of the region. The park is located on the tranquil shores of the Willamba River. Here, you can relax and recharge, or jump straight into an extraordinary selection of water activities. Nature lovers will enjoy exploring the coast and hinterland national parks, and you can entertain the kids at nearby Big Buzz Fun Park. Most importantly, your pooch is allowed to stay at the park too. For more pet-friendly accommodation ideas, visit the Take Your Pet website. With so many of us considering our pets as an important member of the family, it's no wonder we want to take them on holidays with us. Caravanning provides the perfect opportunity to do so. So I'm here at Crystal Brook Tourist Park to get some pet-friendly tips from a couple of new age caravan enthusiasts. Peter, Michelle. Hey. Hi. So two beautiful greyhounds. How do you go with them in a caravan? They're not, they're not small. No, they're not. I've got one that's almost 40 kilos and the other one's 30 kilos. But, you know, they once they're on our bed at the front, that's basically where they stay. But um, Maggie here, in the purple, she just likes to be outdoors. Right. And sits out the front. So the, the new age caravan's quite handy for that. It's, yes. it's, it, can, it can accommodate them inside and this beautiful uh, awning here mm. provides a lot of shade for them. It certainly does. Um, so if it does get a bit too hot, we've also got the air conditioner inside, <laughs> which they don't mind having been under the air con either. So yeah, we all do in the yeah. hot summer's day. So how do you go with them in the caravan parks? How do you, do you have trouble when you go away? No, never have we had any trouble. In fact, we've been with people who have said, we don't even realise you've got two greyhounds. Because <laughs> they don't play up, they just, they're very quiet. They're an easy breed, aren't they? They mm. need, need minimal exercise and then they just want to sleep all day. That's cuddle. exactly right. It's good ambassadors for, mm. for the New Age Caravan. Absolutely. So have you got any tips for people that want to go travelling and take their dogs with them? You just take them. Don't mm -hmm. hesitate. What you've got to check that they have dog policies or pet policies. And most of the pet policies are around dogs must be kept on leash. So you can't have them just wandering around. Because the people that don't have any pets, they don't want to be annoyed by dogs running into their caravan sites. Mm -hmm. And we certainly don't want to step in the doggy do. No. But I noticed this park here has an off-leash area. It does, and we have been utilising it. We weren't aware of the dog leash free park, and we've been utilising that. But of course, with greyhounds, you only allow the greyhounds to go in there. So because it's a bit of an off-season, we've been able to just access it most of the time. And these uh, Maggie and Lenny have just loved having their little run of the morning. So we love it. Lucky pups. Mm, very lucky. <laughs> but we think we're lucky too. Exactly. <laughs> G'day John, Shirley, how are you? Hey, G'day, how are so you? So who have we got here? 
is Logan. Logan, how old's Logan? Two and a half. So golden retrievers are pretty active normally. <laughs> how does he go in a caravan? Uh, he has his moments, but pretty much he's pretty good. He's, he's very, very good. good. He's a very calm dog. Yeah. So what are some of the, some of the key features about travelling with a dog when you're caravanning around? Since we've had this van, it's been really good because we've got so much more space with the bed configuration out the front. And the really big thing is the walk space that you've got inside the van, so you're not tripping over him as we have been with past vans. <laughs> so, because he is big. He is a big boy. But uh, it's not a problem with walk space. That's and that's what we like about it. And you got any tips for anybody out there that'd like to go caravanning and take a pet with them? Have a dog that's well socialised, well trained, amenable, easy to get on with, enjoys company of other dogs. And uh, Logan is just it, he really is good at that. And you've got to make sure that you adjust your lifestyle to the dog. So he needs, these dogs need a couple of big long walks every day and right. you just make sure it happens. Yeah. So you make sure you find caravan parks where you can, you can yes. have that. Yeah. That or yeah. free camps where you yeah. can do that in as well. So. Looks like Logan's pretty happy and enjoying his holiday. Seems to me like caravanning with a pet is one of the great ways to get out there and travel. For more information, you can check out New Age Caravans at newagecaravans.com.au. Do you like travelling with pets and think you have a great idea to help create the best pet-friendly caravan ever? If so, then get your entry in for the chance to win a $250 pet stock gift voucher and $250 worth of family parks vouchers, so you and your pet can take a well-deserved break. All you need to do is come up with a pawsome design idea that will help keep you and your furry friend extra comfortable and safe whilst on a caravanning holiday. To submit your idea, go to newagecaravans.com.au. Well, that brings us to the end of the show for another episode. We hope you've had some fun and learned a few things along the way. Well, I know I did. We had a blast, didn't we, Das? It's amazing how many people travel around the countryside in their vans. I know. Who would have thought? How good would it be to go on a holiday with Darcy? Oh, that would be great, huh? Well, maybe after this series is finished, we might. What do you think, Das? Well, I think he's earned it. Mm. For you folks at home, before you head off on your pet-friendly holiday, don't forget to get your entries into our New Age Caravan competition. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>